24 karat pubic zirconium. For diamonds that aren't just encrusted, but enthrusted right near your goddamn face, who doesn't love having some nice pubic zirconium enthrusted jewels right in your goddamn grill? Do the kids still say grill? My homies, how you doing? Anyway, I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Collision from Holy Toledo, Ohio. About 4,000 people in the Huntington Center. And this show actually had some good storyline progression. I'm not going to say everything was perfect, but as far as a two-hour show on a Saturday night, they at least did all right here. Saturday nights were all right for fighting and some storyline progression. They seem to be building a thing with Julia Hart having a stable while Julia Hart and Lee Johnson are on their honeymoon and very, very happy for them. So, no pre-tape promos, just right into Elton John, which... Sounded less dirty in my head, so let's just roll with it. Uh, the venue holds around 8,000 people. So look, running mid-size arenas like this, even if you only have 4,000 people, is smarter. One, cheaper rent, regardless of the people you know. And also, it's a better atmosphere. That's why I hope that they run in Washington State again. Maybe they go for the um, Everett Arena in Everett, Washington. 10,000 people. They maybe could run something like that. That would be kind of cool. Nevertheless... So, uh, they were having issues, uh, at least with some cable providers, with the picture going in and out, da, 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 and some audio issues. They fixed those quickly. Crack staff that Zaslov has working uh, for Warner Brothers Discovery. So, Kevin Kelly, Shivani, and Nigel on commentary. Nigel being a full-on heel commentator. <laughs> and I have nothing against Shivani. I like Shivani, but I don't know if Shivani was necessarily needed for this. He's enthusiastic, but does he really add anything at this point? So anyway, Copeland arrives, trying to not call him Edge, even though I just said it. Um, he is just wanting to talk about Christian Cage. Christian Cage comes out <coughs> with a bunch of security, obviously wrestling uh, you know, trainees. And it, he had the BCC banned from the arena. Because he's facing Danielson, who's still a member of the BCC, despite I don't really think they know what the hell they're doing with all this stuff. Where are they good guys, bad guys, whatever? So he says, Edge, you need to leave. Well, Copeland, sorry, see, still doing it. Copeland needs to leave. Danielson comes out and says, Well, here's in the interest of a fair, you know, even playing field, guess what? Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus are banned from ringside, so there you go. <laughs> and then. Starks and Bog Bill showed up. He's Bog Bill because of the shoe print where the eye is. And I'm in big, that is, because if it was two shoe prints, it'd be Bog Bull. And he is just all fired up. Starks, that is. When Bog Bill doesn't talk, it is better. He is just all kinds of pissed. He's tired of being <coughs> walked over. He gets compared to being a rock ripoff by Copeland, who stumbles a little bit and then that really sent me over the edge. Ah, ha, 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 ha. To be to be fair, I, I like I like Starks. I just think that I think sometimes like doing this insider stuff and whatever, even though a lot of the fans watching are smart, sometimes gets a little bit. It just gets a little bit stale, and Starks is so much better than some of that material. He delivered it well, but Starks is really a tremendous talent. Here's FTR, they're still hurt, and then the security gets laid out. I think the bald one got absolutely destroyed on that big rig. I hope he's all right, because that looked really brutal. And, <clears throat> no, the shaven Luther Reigns guy got laid out. So, 16 minutes, though, it took to accomplish this. And if I'm going to complain about WWE taking a while with their talking segments, I have to do the same here. Now, it did end up leading to some stuff, but they could have probably cut this down by about five minutes, maybe seven. I mean, I get it, but it went a little bit long. So then MJF is in Boston to stand up for Jewish hate. Let me just say right now, if you're going to do anti-Semitism, be anti-Semitic and hate Jewish people. And I'm not even talking about the Israeli Palestine, you know, that conflict over there. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking in general. Don't hate people because of their religious faith or because of their upbringing as far as that. Hate them because of who they are if you want, but don't just hate them because of that. Don't be bigots is my point. Just don't be a goddamn bigot. So, 
I don't think Robert Kraft had a goddamn clue where he was because he was busy getting, uh, getting uh, gotten up in a massage parlor. That's right. That's right, Robert Kraft. As great of an owner as he is, kind of a piece of shit. <coughs> so, Samoa Joe took on Willie Mack. Ring of Honor TV Championship. Willie Mack still moving pretty well, all things considered. Hit uh, some nice offense. Samoa Joe just being, you know, on a different level at this point. Eventually does... Even after getting hit with the stunner, hits a muscle buster. One, two, three. Good stuff. That was well worked. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that match at all. Two big beefy guys colliding. Willie Mack had a good showing. Samoa Joe got a nice win. The match maybe went 10 minutes. And then CJ uh, is in the back with Lexi Nair. CJ, by the way, the former Lana, just in case people forgot that she was there, I kind of wish that she wasn't because I really don't think this is going to work. <laughs> but she makes champions. Of course you do. Noted champion of WWE. Oh, right. Right. So anyway, uh, Action Andretti shows up and says, if you don't know, now you know. I'm Action Andretti. And then he takes off. And then he gets kidnapped by Miro later. By the way, they did about 20 takes for this CJ promo, and this was the one they went with. Think about that. Danhausen is back on a TV, and then he's going to be back on everyone else's TVs. I'm glad he's recovered, but I don't get the gimmick, and I don't need to get the gimmick, and I don't feel like getting it. I'm sorry. I, I just don't. So then Juice Robinson took on Daniels. Daniels finishing out his career. I would imagine this is his last full year. Um... Good idea. Daniel should be, you know, making people look good on the way out. He is also a backstage agent for the company. He still works a bit in Defy and has done stuff and is just, you know, going around doing whatever. Getting his, uh, <clears throat> getting one more dance with glory, as it were. So we did have Bullet Club there. Uh, Bullet Club Gold, by the way, along with the cardboard uh, cutout of Jay White. Held by Jay White. I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, <clears throat> Shivani was excited for Rick and Morty coming back for some reason. Juice wins. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. And then Jay proposes to Juice Robinson or gives him a ring. That's what he did. It's a pubic zirconium ring. Or zirconia, however the hell you say it. And Juice says that he will take the ring from MJF. People say they're retconning the quarters thing, which was a bad idea in retrospect, even though I understood where they were going with it. And I don't think this is the last time they're going to use the quarters. I just think this is the way to hype up Juice winning the Battle Royal to face MJF for the Dynamite Diamond Ring. Jay then was talking, by the way. <clears throat> so Dustin's also in the Battle Royal. And I do want to note that if Bullet Club Gold ever uh, decided to, you know, advertise dick pills, they'd be the Wang Wang Gang. You're welcome for that. So, Nick Wayne is being interviewed by Lexi Nair, and apparently JR is going to be doing a sit-down interview with Nick Wayne and his mother. I think there's potential for this not to be <coughs> too bad, but I worry because of how they set some things up, that even with the components possibly working, you know, the mother trying to get through to her son, who's turned his back on everything that he stood for, I worry they're going to make this stagey when they could actually make this somewhat serious. So... Anyway, Kyle Fletcher took on the big savage guy. I don't, I didn't catch his name and I don't really care. The bigger guy of who used to be Bear Country. So that guy hit some power moves and that guy hit with a power bomb off the top and then a dragon sleeper won it because Kyle Fletcher is proving that he is the best technical wrestler in the company. <laughs> and the acclaimed, or at least Bowens and Billy, are going to help Max Caster be a better person. And, you know, say nice things and be cool with people and everything because he needs better people skills. Then Renee comes back in and he says, Hey, Renee, how about those oral sessions? Because, you know, that's her podcast, but she gets all upset. God damn it, Max. It was funny, I guess. Yeah, it was sort of funny. So, then the former JAS members that make NWO Black and White from 1999 look good. And that group had Vincent in it. So, Hager is still there. <laughs> Hager should not be getting a dime from a big wrestling company because he hasn't earned any of it. They're going to have a match in Memphis. Put on my blue suede shoes and get the fuck away from that match. And I'm going to go down and maybe fly Delta Blue. I don't know what the fuck the lyrics are for that. Mark Cohn didn't nail him into my head. 
Speaking of things that were nailed into my head, this next match, because it went a while, Statlander versus Sky Blue. TBS Championship, Sky Blue. Her face is melting. Oh, what a world, what a world. She's got it all smeared on her face. Makeup. I run a clean show. Stop thinking about it. But because she got <coughs> a big old facial from Julia Hart, again, clean show. Now Sky Blue is changing. So I do want to say this is probably Sky Blue's best match. I mean, granted, we're graying on a curve here because Sky Blue has improved. Also hasn't been given the best chance to have a match with somebody that you know, could get a good performance out of her. <clears throat> this guy is improving. Some nice near falls. There was a nice, you know, power bomb off the top by Sky Blue. If we hadn't just seen that in the previous match, it probably would have meant something. Could have probably, whatever. The nice knees. <clears throat> and then it looked like Sky Blue was going to, you know, get a very, she got a head scissor, like she was going to take her over. But then, nope. Saturday Night Fever, one, two, three. And there you go. Then Willow <laughs> shows up because Sky Blue won't shake the hand of Statlander and Willow. And Willow's going to change because Willow got blown in the face by Julia. She got a Julia Hart facial as well. Julia Hart just not going to finish that, but she's giving them out to various women. Yeah, I hope her honeymoon goes. Oh, God, I hate being tired and doing this stuff because then I just have no filter as opposed to the, you know, structured reviews that I usually have. So... <clears throat> Skyle, or Skyle, Kyle Fletcher says he wants to face Kenny Omega, and he will on this next on this next Dynamite. Apparently, Rusha's group is now back, but now they have fancy cars. Because there's one thing that AEW needs more is factions. They need more factions. <sighs> Keith Lee beat a guy named the Mullet. I just I don't actually know what the fuck his name is. I have nothing against the guy. I didn't catch it. In bar to go back, he looked like he was <coughs> ripped out of the Rock and Roll RPMs playbook, or he was on late era world class, or late, uh, you know, mid 85 Georgia when the territory was almost on its ass. And I mean, hey, cool throwback look. Keith Lee beat the shit out of him, hit a spirit bomb. Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty, curse you, Sherlock Holmes's enemy, were watching backstage. Here's Miro. He knows that evil is coming. He will have to take out all the men that his wife wants. And then he has kidnapped Action Andretti, <clears throat> pulling him from somewhere below because he was redeeming these nuts. A friend of mine will absolutely be dying laughing in the comments because of that. And they're going to have a match next week. Next week, Penta versus Jay White. Oh, boy. And <clears throat> Sting talks. Rocky Romero then talks about facing Mystico. Remember Mystico when he was Sin Cara and he kept botching? I saw his first WWE pay-per-view match. Over to Limit 2011. It was fucking rotten and he never got any better, at least in WWE. I mean, Rocky against Mystico, it's going to be for two championships or maybe it's just going to be the pound for pound crown. I guess? I don't know enough about CMLL to care. It's something against it. So Danielson and Christian Cage had a pretty damn good match. Great main event, actually, in all honesty. And compared to the rest on this show, you know, that's unfair because there was effort on this show. <laughs> JR was here on commentary with all the enthusiasm of a senior citizen who just got woken up and wants to just go back to sleep for a while. Um, the support trans kids sign in the front row. Good. And if you fucking disagree with that, fuck you. Seriously. There are no gender-affirming surgeries being performed on young adults you have to be of age. You have to be able to consent. You have to be able to do all this stuff. So quit fucking getting the brain parasites in your goddamn heads, you fucking morons. And support your children if your children realize that maybe they are not living as their true selves. Maybe it actually isn't just a phase. Maybe your fairy tale book's all bullshit. So anyway, um, they took this seriously. Christian focused on the arm. <laughs> Danielson fired back. Hit a barricade drop kick. And there was fuck you Christian chance. A lot of good action here. They gave this a while. This was like a twenty, a twenty five minute match actually. And they did the big entrance, <clears throat> you know, the big introductions, the spotlights, all that. Stop doing the diving headbutt, goddamn it, Brian. I know this is your last year, but fuck, we want you to have an attached brain stem. Even if your choice in wife makes me question as to how you have an attached brain stem, that's mean. I'm sure Brie is nice. She's dumb, but she's nice. Let's get back to the review. Um, so, 
Brian does. Brian keeps selling his arm. He eventually hits the diving headbutt again. Why? Why? So a frog splash or two. A lot of great action here. <clears throat> he keeps favoring the arm because he gets the lapel locked on. And Christian gets to the ropes, but then Brian manages to get him out and get it on again. And then Bog Bill shows up, and then Stark shows up and hits him with the title, and then seemingly passes out like it rings out. I'm like, you gotta poke him with a stick. I, I don't want to be absolute today. So anyway, Christian won. <clears throat> and then we got a beat down with the heels. FTR and Copeland show up, and Nick Wayne takes a spear from Copeland, and that's good. You know what? I like Nick Wayne getting, you know getting more screen time here because and I just a little side him close with this said it before say it again the numerous times I talked to him at various indie shows before <clears throat> and during his attitude is he wants to learn and he's going to learn he obviously is over the moon doing this stuff people see a lot of big things in him and it's gonna take time it ain't gonna just be a rocket push automatically it's gonna take time but he's got potential and i'm glad that he's getting featured like this and you can beat him up it doesn't take any steam off of christian's group or wh whoever's leading it christian obviously is whoever's actually in the group nevertheless that was collision let me know your thoughts in the comments like share subscribe twitter handle in the description i'm john Rickland. i'll see you soon